Is your laser not working as well as it used to? Well, it might be time to put a new tube in it. There are various reasons you might need to replace the tube. It might not have as much power as it used to, possibly it cracked, um, possibly had to deal with freezing weather. Whatever it is, if you have to replace a tube, this video is for you. It's not a very hard process. It's honestly just a couple screws and a few electrical connections that are pretty easy to make. The entire process will take somewhere around 20 to 30 minutes from start to refiring the laser. You will want to make sure that your laser has been off and unplugged for a little bit of time before you do this, just because this is high voltage, there's capacitors that you're dealing with and all of that. As always, this is working with high voltage electrical. So be sure that you are confident in what you're doing or that you have somebody who knows what they're doing on hand or doing it for you. I've worked with electricity for a long time, um, never professionally, but I've done a lot of my own electrical work and helped uh, wire basements and stuff that all pass code. So I have knowledge and um, experience. And so I would ask that you have that too before diving in. If you have all of that and are ready, then that is exactly what we're gonna do. We're gonna go ahead and start with the video of replacing your Monport K40 laser tube. It's simple, and if you have a larger laser or a K40 from another manufacturer, it'll likely be very much the same. Um, there might be some, you know, differences here or there on whether or not, you know, this cable looks like this or what color this is, but typically a K40 is a K40 and a CO2 laser is a CO2 laser. More wattage does mean you will have larger tubes and you'll have more to deal with, but overall it is all pretty much the same. So with all that said, I'm Patrick with Created Workshop. Let's get started replacing this laser tube. The first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is something I've already done, and that's unhook your laser from its chiller. Once that's done, I'm using my air compressor to just blow everything out because we are gonna be disconnecting these water lines in here. And then we're gonna go ahead and take off the lid that covers the laser. Of course, my laser is unplugged and has been for a while before starting this. And now, once all of that is done, go ahead and start removing the screws. There's two mounts on this K40, and there's two screws in each mount. You're also going to want to take off this tape so you can undo this cable. I chose to just cut the cable because I don't need this old tube, and then I was able to get the zip tie cut off and start to work on the rest of it. Here we're taking off that other mount, and there are two spacers on these that you're going to want to pull off. Uh, don't lose those. You need those. That way you don't squeeze the tube too tightly when you put it back in. And from here, I pull all the brackets off and all that, and then pull the water tube off. Um, so that way I can get it off and get it on the new one. I ended up cutting it, as you can see, and there is enough excess for you to do that. It's pretty simple. Now I've got the new laser and I just set it on the holes and uh, or on the hold downs and then start to get everything rewired. It's pretty simple. I just kind of go the re reverse of what you did, put your water cables back where they were on the last tube. And you can see here a little bit more of a close up of me fitting that on. Um, it could take a little bit of fighting with to get it on. It wasn't the easiest, but it eventually does slide on. And then I started to work on the wiring. So I took the ceramic brake off. That's to help with heat dissipation. These wires are just kind of twist tied together. And so that's what I did. I just retwisted them together. I put that back on and reused the same silicone or whatever type of electrical tape they used. Uh, and then I did go back and zip tie that so it wouldn't move. And I did the same thing up here, um, except once I undid it in order to reattach it to the new cable, I felt like it would be a little bit safer to use a crimp connector. So that's what I did. You, you don't have to do that if you don't have the tools for it, but because I have the tools, I decided that that would be the best route to go for me. I then zip tied it back to the hold down that they've got here. Um, thanks for putting that there, Monport, actually. That is uh, very handy to have. I clipped the excess and now it was time to start getting the tube reattached. Honestly, this whole process probably took me maybe 15 or 20 minutes and that was with having to find most of my tools that I was using for this. Now there is going to come a longer part and that comes after all of this is done. I will go ahead and link to it up in the upper right hand corner for aligning your mirrors. When you replace your tube, you are gonna have to realign your mirrors. I didn't have to realign my tube, I did have to realign my mirrors though. So that's something to just keep in mind with when you're doing it all. 
Don't tighten these down too tight either because you could crack your tube and that's the last thing you wanna do. Now we get it all reassembled, get everything plugged back in. I've already got my chiller plugged in and don't do what I'm doing. I'm doing this just to show you, but I've got everything powered on and you can see there that we have a nice colored tube. We're getting it rehomed in light burn and then it's gonna be time to do what you should always do when doing this is a ramp test. This ramp test is gonna show you exactly where your focal point is. And once you have all of that sorted out, you're ready to start really dialing in your mirrors and getting back to cutting. And once you have your mirrors aligned, you'll be able to cut just like this. This is two millimeter acrylic. We're cutting in one pass and it looks absolutely beautiful. This was a cake topper for a local client. It cut out great. I did have a little bit of a flare up there, but in the end, it looks fantastic. As you can see from that, it is all done and working great. This solved a lot of my problems with the laser not being as powerful as it was before. It wasn't even cutting uh, leather before, just some standard like two ounce leather wasn't cutting at all with the old tube. With the new tube, it is working great. You just saw it cut some two millimeter black uh, acrylic. It also cut some three and a half millimeter plywood and it works fantastic. So if you've been having issues, I hope this video was a help to you. We've got several other videos coming out on lasers, um, including an upcoming comparison between a 40 watt diode laser and the Monport K40. If you've been wondering if it's worth it to spend four times as much on a diode laser instead of getting something like the K40, we're gonna have all of that for you in a future video. We also have a few other things that we're gonna be covering on the Monport before all is said and done. And also we have several different CNC projects coming up. You can see right behind me, right over here, that is my um, Carbide 3D Shapoko 3 XXL. It is an older model, but it puts in work. I've got a 1.5 kilowatt spindle on it and I can run it at nearly 400 inches per minute through a bunch of different materials, including walnut and maple. So if you have a Shapoko or any other CNC and you're interested in finding out where I get some of my designs, how I do some of my design work or any of that stuff, then be sure to hit that subscribe button down below like this video as well. That helps YouTube recommend it to other people. And also I would love it if you left me a comment giving me some tips or feedback. These are some of my earliest videos and I know that maybe in the future, I'm gonna look back at these and think, you know, man, that was just not that great, but we all have to start somewhere. And so if you have any feedback, whether it's on lighting, audio, camera, um, even how I'm talking or what I'm covering, please leave those in the comments below. I do see every comment, even if I'm not able to reply to each and every one, I do see each and every comment. So I would really appreciate that. Thank you again for watching. I hope this was helpful for you. If it was, share it with a friend who might be able to use it as well. We'll catch you in the next one.